Hello YouTube, Fuzzfinger here bringing you another episode of Final Fantasy IV today, so please do stick around and join me as we go into the ancient waterway here from the town of Baron. And if you enjoy this episode, please remember to hit the like button and be subscribed to my YouTube channel. Before we go any further, just make sure that your party is nicely rested up and healed with maximum MP etc etc and that you have the gear that you want equipped. Make sure you check back on the previous episode if you need to just double check who to get for whom and you know just to make sure that we're ready to go into the next dungeon. So the door is here which you can just see on the map here on Baron. We're going to need the key that we collected previously and we'll be able to enter and make our way down into the dungeon itself. There's going to be numerous new enemies that we haven't yet encountered before. In fact, all of the enemies in this dungeon are new to us at this point in the game. So we're going to encounter Gygus Gators, and they're going to be weak to ice. We're also going to encounter an enemy known as Devil's Castanet and Splashers, and both of those are going to be weak to thunder. Yang is going to be your friend because his weapons will do massive damage to all of those enemies. There is one exception and that's the Electro Fish which I'll point out when we bump into it. Uh, we'll actually absorb thunder so don't get Yangi to attack those because you're going to end up healing them. Instead the Ice Rod is going to be your friend in those situations. So we know the routine now. We're going to encounter enemies and basically do a lot of stuff. Pretty much what we'd expect at this point in the game. So have the ice rod on the electro fish, remember? And everyone will take care of these for us. Look at that damage. So we're just going to continue with the exploring. We're going to start by just going south. It's the only thing we can actually do, so no surprises there. And we're going to go all the way down and across to the east here for three chests we can grab. Just make sure we've explored. And we're going to get a high potion, an ether, and a Zeus's wrath. So we'll pick those up first of all. And then we're going to head north here. And just continue to map out the floor as we go. We're going to end up going up north even further. Again, Yang is pretty good at taking out these guys. So they shouldn't cause us too many problems. And it is just a case now following the linear path round to the end. And as usual, we'll get a reward for completing the dungeon map here. So just make sure you get all those crannies and nooks. So you don't have to be backtracking later on. There we have it. And we get three high potions for our trouble there. And we're going to enter the next area, which is the next floor here, B3. And this one is a bit of a pain, actually, because there's lots of secret hidden areas. Nothing exciting, really, about those, but they are just a bit awkward to find. And we are going to need to find them in order to complete the mapping for this place, as well as just finding the next area as well. Uh, you don't actually get much reward, uh, reward for mapping this place either, I think you get an ether. But you know, for the sake of 100%, we are going to be going ahead and doing it. So we're just going to start by following the initially deceptive linear section. So we're going to enter the water here, and we're just going to start by continuing on down south. You can see that the map seems to end here. But alas, everything is fine. And you can see that there's a chest. And we're going to get that by heading west. And there's a chest up here, actually, so we're going to go and grab that. This has got a bronze arrow glass. So we're just going to continue on south, again, to the secret bit, this time heading east. So you can see that we're basically exploring all the parts of the map. Uh, through the secret passageways here. And there's that other chest that we saw. We're going to grab that, which should contain a spider silk.
Yes, so there's the spider silk. Now we're going to basically head back towards the entrance. We can just find all these secret paths to lead us back again, that is. There we go. And this time we're looking for an eastern path, secret path. So here we are back towards the entrance area. And we're just going to find the secret passage there. We can explore this little section here. And then we can go straight on into this bit here. And I believe there should be a chest around here. So we're going to go and grab that. Before we do anything else. Before we forget about it as they say. We get some Hermes sandals for that one. And if we head south there's going to be another secret path. So we'll make sure we've explored everything first. So I've been getting levels nicely since we've been in this area. I'm sure you folks have too. It's not the greatest amount of experience, but is this a dead end? Of course it isn't. We can basically head down into an area where we have a choice. And the first thing we're going to do is uh, go to the west just to explore this area here. Nothing actually in here, but we do need to explore it for the map. And now we're going to enter the final area, fortunately. If we can just find the entrance into it. There we go. And not only can we finish exploring the map here, but we can head north to the actual exit of the dungeon as well. And for that annoying map, we get an ether. whoop de doo da But at least we do get access now to the next area here. And before going any further, I should just point out there's a couple of new enemies that we're going to be seeing, or could be seeing, one is the Hydra, which you can just take out with Thunder Attacks. And the other is the Flood Worm, which is actually a complete pain. It's really healthy in terms of the fact it's got a lot of health. And it can also one-shot you with its added effect death ability. But you can actually, the best tactic to kill it is one-shot it with the Break ability, the Break Magic spell. Which doesn't always work, but when it does, then the encounter's over. So just be a little bit cautious when you uh, do encounter that enemy and be aware of that. But it is rare, is the Flood Worm, so you might not even get to see it yet. But anyway, we're going to start just by exploring and then heading north. And we can see a chest already. Nice to see that Cecil is levelling again in his Paladin role, isn't it? So what was I saying before we got into battle there? Oh yeah, we can see a chest. And it is actually possible to get. There's a secret exit right here, as you can see. Or a secret path next to the exit, I should say. Not only do you get the map complete, but also you can grab the chest itself. It's not exciting, it contains an ether, but there you go. So we'll get our ether there, and then make our way over to the exit. And you can still encounter the flood worm here on this floor, along with some Baron Guardsmen, which we have fought in the past, uh, but there you go. So you'll notice that the floor's already mapped out for us. We're going to head over to the western exit first, because there's a save point here, and by golly we're going to make use of that. And you've probably noticed that chest, so no surprise there's actually a secret path here. And we get the Ancient Sword. For that, uh, don't bother using a tent, although you can if you really need to. But we're going to head over to the eastern door next. Although you can try and find the Flood Worm if you want to encounter it. First there's the Baron's Gu Baron Guardsman that I mentioned to you. Ugh, so despite about 40 minutes of grinding, I've not been able to encounter that stupid Flood Worm. So I'm going to take a break for now because my brain is turning to mush. And we're going to head over into the next area. So we take the eastern exit here and we're thrust into the moat outside of Baron Castle. We're going to head south since pretty much it's the way we need to go, which makes sense. And we're going to look for an opening in the wall. Which we're heading to here. And first thing we're going to do is make our way over to the tower on the western side up here. Because we can rest up for free. We have actually been here previously, you may have remembered that. 
if you've been playing along, that is. So we're going to choose to rest up for the night. And now we're going to make our way back out of the castle. So that's the reason I told you not to bother using the tent. I managed to avoid using one as well, despite doing about 40 minutes of grinding. The good news about that, though, is that I've actually, no doubt, leveled up my party. I didn't really check. Yeah, I think Cecil's gone up about four or five levels, hasn't he? And the others have gone up a few levels as well, which is nice to see. Don't bother equipping that ancient sword. I can't remember if I mentioned that or not, by the way, on Cecil, since it's not going to be as good as what he's already using there. Uh, right then, so... We're looking for a door round about here, so this should be it. And we're just going to follow the path again. And this will take us into the castle. And a cutscene awaits. How interesting, apparently this guy has joined the party. But Palom isn't having any of it. Okay, so it seems like it was a ruse. We are thrust into battle against Bagan here. And just a bit of information before we actually go ahead and kill him. Bagan has 4,200 health. He's weak to ice. And you want to be around level 24. I recommend a minimum of level 24 before taking this fella on in battle. And what we're going to do is cover... Uh, so I'm just going to show you the attacks that I want you to do with the characters in order to take care of this guy. Because he's actually split into three parts. His main body and his arms. But his arms regenerate if they die. So we're going to try and ignore those for the time being. Um, but we're going to start by covering Param. And then with Palom, we're going to use the bluff ability. And with Telar, we are going to use white magic. And start casting haste. Mostly onto Cecil and Yang. Yang is going to go for three rounds of focus. Because that's going to nicely boost up his abilities there. And we'll get healing going as well. And once Cecil's got cover going, we're going to start attacking the boss. And just make sure that we stay nicely on top of the healing here. So we're going to continue with our focus on Yang. We do want to get as much damage from him in a single hit as possible here. We'll pop that onto Cecil. We will need to just cast a remedy or assume it on Yang so that he can once again start attacking. 
you can go ahead with Bio. I'm Bygun here. And we're going to Asuna Yang here. And looks like we need to bring Young Gun back to life, doesn't it? We're going to raise Palom here. Just get some curing action going as well. And then we'll start doing some protects and other bits of uh, maybe shell as well. Would be useful. And don't forget you can protect all and shell all as well. Just to try and reduce some of this quite nasty incoming damage, in all honesty. And we'll again try that fire. And we'll go for a cure. Cure Agar. Oh, I think. We tell up. And we'll go for the third round of focus here. Hopefully, we'll just about stay alive. With some of these nasty spells and attacks. Tellar's not great at healing, mostly because of his low MP. At least by the time you've done everything else. Uh, let's just go on to defend for now. And with three rounds of focus, we'll start attacking. Hopefully, we'll get a lot of damage done. Oh no, we've got mini status. That sucks. It's always the way, isn't it? Let's get some cure going. And just try and get this guy down as fast as we can now. Which means we need to start building up some focus again. That was really bad luck that Yang had. Um, that bloody mini on him. Now we can't cast Bio. I think that's what killed us before, wasn't it? We had, uh, as in killed Palom, or Palom, whoever it was. That green is reflect status. So I know I've only got one round of focus, but I am going to try and get some damage off while we've got the opportunity to do so. Don't want to be doing that with Reflect on. Get some nice attacks going there. Hopefully this guy will be going down shortly. Okay, now as fast as possible we do need to try and finish these arms off. If it's even possible we can do because they will explode and kill us. It's no problem as long as one person survives though because we are going to get a free heal in a moment anyway. Looks like we're going to get out of this one no problem. So it's a little bit rough fight but we got there in the end. The main problem was I was so busy commentating, I think, and watching what abilities I was using that I wasn't paying attention to the reflect status. But we got there, we got there. And a couple of useful levels as well. But before doing anything now, we are going to want to head all the way back to the bedroom of Cecil, which is where we were a few moments ago, in the tower, and heal up for free, and then head back to the waterway 
So I will leave it in order to save, because it's the only place we can save before our next boss fight, which is upcoming. And it's a challenging boss fight as well. One of which may, which may take multiple attempts. So I highly, highly recommend saving at least. Since we don't particularly want to be killing that bygone fella again, do we? Let me just check everybody's nicely healed up. And indeed they are. Getting close to the 30s now in the levels. Not quite there yet, but we are getting close. And now I'm going to head back to the save point. But folks, I'm going to finish off the episode here because to be honest, after all that grinding, trying to find that enemy that I never actually found, I do need to take a bit of a break. So I'm going to head back and save. But I hope you folks have enjoyed this episode. If you have, please don't forget to hit the like button and come back and join me next time. And we're going to continue on with our adventure here in Final Fantasy IV. So take care folks and bye for now.